Hey everyone, welcome to the channel for another Escape from Tarkov video. This time, taking a second look at my money making tips for the reserve map, with a lot of new knowledge gained from a hefty amount of playtime over the course of this patch. Over the last few months, I've found tons of new and extremely valuable loot areas that weren't covered in my older video, so I figured it was about time for an update. Reserve is by now widely known as one of the absolute best spots to make money in Tarkov, but the tricky part is there's a ton of different spots to check and many of them are hidden in out of the way places. Rather than breaking it down into specific tips, I'm going to share my two main routes through the map, what keys are needed to open each area, and what kind of loot you can find there, both with and without keys. This should provide a good overview of where the loot is located, and show you a good route between places that you want to check, regardless of which side of the map you spawn on. Keep in mind, these routes are focused on looting and moving quickly and safely between loot spots. I won't be talking too much about PvP in this one, except to mention where you might commonly run into other players. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at my up-to-date guide for making mad money on reserve. To start this off, I want to begin with the more easy to figure out side of the map, with the observatory, helicopter courtyard, and nice organized building layout. This side of the map has a lot of very densely packed loot hotspots in each of the buildings surrounding the courtyard with the helicopter. When you spawn on this side of the map, you'll usually be near a building or up at the observatory, and I find it's best to try and secure whichever building you spawn close to. For this one, I'll be starting at the base of the hill and starting the route with the King Building. This is an amazing building to loot with or without keys. Starting from the front, the main server room area has a lot of spawns for military items like signal transceivers and military circuit boards, power filters, and plenty of other stuff. These can spawn on the server racks spread around the room, the wooden boxes, and along the back wall on the metal shelving. Up the stairs, the hallway here has one locked door on the right which can be opened with the RBRH key but only has a few weapon spawns and some cabinets. At the end of the hall on the left, there's a storage room with shelves that can spawn industrial loot and it's worth checking. There's another similar room to this one near the stairs on this floor, with some shelves and boxes to check for industrial loot and sugar. Next, I head down to the second floor and check two more rooms. First, the server room near the stairs, which can sometimes have rare electronics on the racks or the floor. Next, the room on the left of the stairs and the large room it connects to have some more electronics loot and can sometimes spawn graphics cards and vertex. When I clear this building, I usually go straight from the second floor and into the basement, where you can use a few highly underrated keys to get some pretty well hidden loot. First, the RBGN key opens up the metal utility door at the bottom of the stairs, and in here with the toolboxes you can often find fire steel and things like large air filters and tank batteries. The second locked room down here is to the right in the larger room with the beds, and is opened with the RBOP key. This room can spawn barter loot on the shelves, as well as a valuable intelligence folder or gold chain on the desk. Up on the first floor, take a left and go through the grate, and if you check the rooms on your left as well as the server room it connects to, you can usually find a nice amount of electronics sometimes some pretty valuable stuff. Make sure to check this particular server rack which has items that can spawn hidden inside if you look closely. From here, I'm going to move around the courtyard to the Black Bishop building. Depending on where you spawn, you might hit these buildings in different order, but it doesn't really matter too much. On the first floor of this building, the locked door on your left requires the RBAM key, and can spawn a lot of industrial loot, as well as a folder with intelligence on the stool behind the desk. Next, I just head up to the second floor where you can find another locked door which requires the RBAK key. This room has a way you can drop down into it as well which I'll quickly show. Inside here you can find graphics cards and Tetris on the shelves, so it's definitely worth a look and can make you some big profits. After this room, I usually sweep the sniper's nest and the four rooms in the hallway on the third floor. The sniper's nest has some weapon spawns, but the rooms in the hallway are some great spots to check if you have no keys. All four of them can spawn rare military loot on the desks, boxes, and shelves, so check them carefully before moving on. Next, I move around the courtyard again to the Black Pawn building, which is a great building to check if you have the keys. Be very careful though because the scav boss can spawn here. I immediately head to the basement of this building and at the far end of the hallway you can find one of two marked rooms on this map, which is opened with the RBBK key. This room can spawn rare weapons, cases, key tools, and tons of other stuff, so if you spawn nearby it's worth it to try and take control of this area. 
Another room worth checking out down here is the shooting range, opened with the RBTB key that can spawn a ton of weapons, ammo, and attachments. Next in this building is a locked armory on the second floor that requires the RB Orb 3 key. In here you can find some rare items on the cabinets, as well as the usual weapons and ammo. Next on the third floor, you can open a door with the RB OB key, which has the chance for an intelligence folder, as well as some rare barter items on the shelves and desk. That's pretty much it for the really good stuff in this building, so now I head to the last one in the courtyard the White Pond building at the base of the hill. This building has some locked doors, but also a nice bit of loot on the roof for players without keys. To start with, you can find locked armories on both the second and fourth floors of this building. These armories are opened with the RB Orb 1 and Orb 2 keys, both featuring similar spawns of weapons, ammo, and attachments. After clearing these, I head up to the roof and first check the green box near the satellite dish for military loot. There's also some good spawns in the green tent and three jackets to search for keys. If you can clear all the buildings in this courtyard, chances are you're going to be full up on loot and looking to extract. If you have the red rebel ice pick and a paracord, this building has a sneaky path in the basement that can lead you straight up the hill to extraction, and it's full of loot as well. The tunnels under the white pond building connect up to the observatory at the top of the hill, and if you check carefully, there is a lot to find down there. This is also a great spot to loot if you have no keys because none of the doors are locked. In the large open room with the wooden walkway, keep an eye on the floor to look for some valuable industrial loot before you make your way into the next room, with a bunch of server racks and a metal walkway. To the left, you can head down into a workshop with several military item spawns and some jackets and a bag. The server racks on the top and bottom of this walkway can spawn some nice loot, and if you continue to the back, there's good loot on both the top and bottom section. On the bottom, you can find two potential intelligence folders near the desk with the lamp. Also be sure to check out these server racks on the top level for signal transceivers and array elements. On the top, you can find a door which leads to a room with a safe, two more intelligence folder spawns on the desk and instrument panel, as well as a computer and some cabinets. Finally, the last place to check before heading up the stairs is the shelving tucked away against the wall, which can spawn a ton of valuable loot. When you're done in the tunnels, head up the giant staircase and you'll be right at the observatory. The two guard posts up here both have safes with valuable loot, but the one on the left requires the RB KPRL key to open. This route has been seriously good to me this patch, and clearing these buildings plus the tunnels and then getting out the cliff extraction or the sewer can net you some really quick money. It's also great because you can start it from any building or even from the observatory and just circle the courtyard so you can start from any spawn. Next up, I'm going to flip to the other side of the map for the spawns near the train station, the bunkers, garages, and the motor pool. This side isn't quite as packed with loot as the helicopter courtyard, but there are some really great spots to loot crafting materials, valuable hideout loot, and quest items. What I like to do is take a route which quickly hits all the good loot on this side of the map and then connects to the previous path so I can clear the entire map. If I spawn on this side, my first objective is to check and clear the other marked room on reserve, which is in the far corner of the map near the train station, very close to a player spawn. Unlike the previous route, this one actually has more of a defined starting point. For this video, I'm going to start the run as if I spawned here, but if you spawn somewhere else on this side of the map, you'll have to push here and clear out any other players. The actual room is inside this building at the back left, and I always try and check this if I'm close for the chance at a case or a key tool. You can also use the RBAO key to open a door at the front of this building with an armory that has a lot of weapon spawns inside. After checking these rooms, hop out the window and then head around the buildings and over the hill. In the dip between the two bunkers, you should be able to slip into the bunker door pretty safely. Down here is an area that seems kind of empty and boring at first, but there's actually a ton of loot down here. Be careful when you come down because scabs and the scab boss can both spawn here. First, you can check all of the shelves, boxes, and benches outside the cages for some pretty nice hideout items. The main attraction, though, are the locked cages. These cages require the RB PSP1 and PSP2 keys, as well as the RB PS81 and PS82 keys. Two of these are fairly cheap and two are pretty expensive, so at the very least, I would say to buy the cheap ones and check it out. 
In these cages, you'll find large wooden crates that contain medical loot, industrial and electronics loot, and tons of food. I would say these crates are probably the single most concentrated source of quest items in the game, and you can find a ton of stuff that you need for therapist, mechanic, and ragman quests down here, plus some really valuable stuff like fuel conditioners, paracords, and ophthalmoscopes to sell. After clearing these cages, there are two good exits to use from this bunker and connect back to the previous route to continue looting, which I call red side and blue side based on the color of the lights. The blue side exit leads up to a staircase which comes out at the far end of the train station, right near the King Building, which is where the previous route started. Normally, I'll come up here, move into the King Building, and then clear the courtyard just like I did earlier. This connects the two routes really well and is great for quickly transitioning into looting the courtyard buildings. The red side exit leads up to the bottom floor of the guard tower near the train station. This is a great exit if you want to head into the tower and get some kills, and you can also dip into the motor pool area from here to get some extra loot. In the motor pool, you can find a few different military battery spawns. First, at the far end of the small garage, there's a great door which requires the RBST key, and inside is a tank battery spawn, three cannon shell spawns, and a bunch of other military loot. Next, if you head into the Black Knight building, on the second floor you can use the RB MP21 key to open a door with another military battery spawn, an intelligence folder, and some other loot. Finally, if you go into the White Knight building, there is a garage on one side where you can jump onto a car and into a hidden hallway. The RB MP22 key opens a door here with yet another military battery spawn and some other assorted loot. This area is pretty risky, which is why I usually take the safer route I mentioned before, but there is some nice stuff here so it's worth a look if you have the space. Well that pretty much covers every spot that I know of in reserve to check for valuable loot. I definitely skimmed over a lot of the little things and bits and pieces, but my general strategy is to prioritize the high value items, and if you want to get rich in Tarkov, that's the best way to do it. Hopefully you can put this knowledge to good use, make some serious money, and have financial problems be a thing of the past in Tarkov. I'll be streaming more Escape from Tarkov on Twitch at twitch.tv slash jdogthewise, and it'd be great to have you drop by the stream, so I'll leave a link for that in the description. Thanks for checking out the video. As always, feel free to leave any comments, corrections, or suggestions down below, and until next time, stay safe in Tarkov City.